Today on Hands On Photography, I have a photographic ninja dropping by to drop some knowledge on us. <laughs> I can't wait to pick this man's brain. Y'all stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Why? Because today I have another guest for the show and he's just going to drop some more outstanding, great photographic knowledge on y'all today. But before we get to that, you know, I got to do my preamble. If this is your first time joining the show, welcome to you and thank you for popping in. Now do me a favor, go ahead and hit subscribe and whatever podcast application you're enjoying this on. Yes, we're available on Spotify and our YouTube channel and Apple Podcast, all these different podcast platforms. So go ahead and subscribe while you're there. But if you're curious to find all of our subscription options, just go to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands on photography. I appreciate you all just joining me each and every Thursday here in the network and also helping to grow the hands on photography community it really does mean a lot. But now with that out of the way, I, I don't want to take up any more time and it just I want to get this man on the screen. Mr. Photo Joseph, how you doing, my man? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. How are you? And I am un. Believable. I'm so glad that you're here because I've been watching your YouTube channel for man, I don't know how long now. And you are like a I don't know, it's like a ninja when it comes to <laughs> the camera. I mean, you, you, you're great with, with photography. You're great with video. You're great with lighting. You're great with audio. I mean, dang, dude, what, what you. don't you do? Good grief. I I, I, I don't know. I try. Thank you. I appreciate all that. Um, although I'm a little confused. I thought we were going to talk about barbecue today. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's after this show. You're an hour early. <laughs> You're an hour early, but it's OK. We can still hang out, right? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Fire up the smoker. Get some ribs on there. Yes, yes, yes. But I do now, appreciate those that don't you know. The reason though. I brought that up is because I've been, I, you know, I'm I love barbecue and I love smoking and I'm always posting those pictures on Instagram and Ant had seen some of those posts and was commenting on them. And, um, and I said, well, we'll have to talk about it when I'm on the oh show. Oh my gosh. Some yeah. of the stuff you've been sharing. <laughs> and then it's been, everybody's here in the, in the, in Northern California. And I believe you're in Oregon. So it's still fairly regional to me. Everybody here has been pretty much locked in and shut down because it, it, it oh, yeah. been cold and nobody's really wanting to do anything. And then you pull out this smoker and it's just like, Oh, comfort food. <laughs> well, you know, as long as it's not, I don't know. Let's say as long as it's not really, really windy, rainy, sleety kind of a cold. Yeah. I'm outside grilling on the weekend. Oh I, you gosh. know, cold, rain, snow, it's all good as long as it's not too much. I, I don't want to be miserable. I'm, I'm going to have to hit Highway 101 like North real soon. <laughs> five. But if you go 101, you're going to, you're definitely going to miss me, but you might smell it. <laughs> right, come up to five and you'll run right into it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, but I, I, I appreciate you joining me. I wanted to, to bring you on and, and have you drop some knowledge with everybody. Here recently, I've been doing a lot of chats and discussions about uh, some some photography gear and particularly working with the, the lens and, and, you know, what you can do with this lens versus that lens. And, and you know, even got into the ins and outs of, you know, here's this really really expensive g master lens here versus having say an stm lens from uh, canon that just cost you about a hundred bucks or whatever you know and just wanted to get into that and 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 see well what are your thoughts on getting into lenses and actually using a particular lens to really elevate your creativity because you know, right now, this is a time to learn photography. A lot of us are not really out and about doing a bunch of stuff, but we all have smartphones. We all have these DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, regardless of the price, but you can still just grasp onto it and learn this craft pretty easily right now. So, so what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I got plenty, but there is one thing that I, that I picked out for your show that I wanted to talk about, and that's my my passion for encouraging newer photographers, people who are just getting into it, who are really trying to learn the craft, to not overburden themselves with a ton of lenses. 
lens, right? It's easy to go, oh, I'm going to, I got to get this lens. I got to get the 24 to 70 and I got to get a 50 and I got a 70 to 200. Oh, and I need this and I need that. And I need the wide angle and the fisheye and the macro. And, and in other words, don't be in <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I, you know, this is not a do as I say. I, this is not a do as I do. This is a do as I say lesson. Anybody who's seen my show knows that I am, I, I got way too much gear. <laughs> This is a do as I say, not as I do lesson. Exactly. Uh, no, but this is this is focused for the uh, for the more beginner, for the um, the early photographer, or even someone who's just trying to rediscover their passion for it. All so, right. first, just not focus, not trying to get every piece of gear there is. You know, don't suffer from gas. Don't worry about that. But the key thing is to focus on a single lens, a prime lens, meaning not a zoom lens. So not a twenty four to seventy, not a thirty five one hundred, just a, a prime lens, and that could be. 24 millimeter could be 35 millimeter. We're talking full frame equivalents here. Could be 50 millimeter. Whatever you have found that you like, and if you don't have a lens that you like already, then I would say go with either 35 or 50. Those are good starting points. Mm -hmm. But have that one lens, one focal length, and use that lens, only that lens, for a long time. I'm talking at least a few months. If you're going on a trip, take that one lens with you. You will find that your photography improves so much when you have to actually engage yourself and start figuring out how to use the gear that you have as opposed to just going, oh, that's far away. I'm just going to pull up a longer lens and I'll get a shot of that. Oh, I just need to put on a wider angle lens and I can get that. Just with that one focal length, you can't zoom it. You have to move around. You have to do what I call, and it's not like I made up this term, but you call it zooming with your feet. You to zoom mm -hmm. with your feet. If you got that 50 mil lens or that 35 or whatever you choose, and you are staying, you, there's the picture you want to take, but it's too far away or it's too close. Instead of being able to just zoom in or out, you have to actually move. And I firmly believe that the act of moving, the simple act of taking one of your lead feet and moving it in front of the other one to move your position, it activates something in your brain and you realize that you can change more than just getting closer or farther. But if you're zooming, all you've got is one thing you can do. Zoom in, zoom yeah. out, zoom in. There's no natural, oh, should I tilt up? Should I squat down? Should I go a little angle? Should I maybe move over here a little bit? That doesn't happen when you're zooming. But as soon as you take that step, like take that literal first step, you're, something in your brain flips and you go, oh, well, now that I've moved forward, maybe I should also crouch down a little bit. Or maybe mm. I should hold the camera up. Or mm -hmm. maybe the shot would be better a couple feet to the left or a couple feet to the right. And all of that is training your brain training your eyes to see the photo, to see the image as you want to ultimately make it and to just over and over and over again with repetition, just beating that in this 10,000 hour rule, just keep doing it and you will get better and better at your photography because you're restricting yourself. All those extra tools, they're not free. Those can be a burden, right? right? You want freedom in photography, have one camera, one lens and just deal with it, mm. figure it out and you will improve so much more. That's the core of the tip. That's the main thing. It makes a huge difference. Now, I like the idea that you mentioned saying a, a 35 mil, something like that. Uh, some people may not realize, but a 35 millimeter is pretty prominent in the world of street photography because it's oh, yeah, fairly absolutely. flexible with being just wide enough. But but you can also get a fairly intimate shot if you want to with it. Uh, a lot of 35 mils are used in portraiture. I wouldn't use it in portraiture, but it still looks pretty nice uh, for for what it actually offers as a focal length. Um, getting into moving around with it, if you consider something like a 35 mil, you're going to get a little bit of a distortion on those lengths. That's that's just the nature of physics. It's not much you can do about that. What are your well, thoughts on having you can, a if you lens spend more like money? That? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you spend more money. That's where money does tend to make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get a 14 millimeter lens with minimal distortion around the edges, but you're going to be spending a lot of money for it. Um, 35 millimeter focal length with minimal distortion isn't too bad. You get to 50, and there's a reason that the 50 millimeter is called the nifty 50. It's just a nice, clean focal length that is easy to build. It's cheap for manufacturers to make because you don't have to deal with a lot of wide distortion. You can get a relatively fast lens for cheap, and you can usually buy from any manufacturer a 50 millimeter, let's say, f like 1.8 that might cost a couple hundred bucks, a 1.4 range that might cost between 500 and 1,000, and then like a 1.2, 1.1 range that's really fast, and that one's going to cost you more. That might be like a you know $1,500, $2,000 lens. 
but usually you'll find all three kind of apertures you're normal you're pretty good and then you're really good in a 50 millimeter lens at varying price points from pretty much any manufacturer uh, any camera manufacturer out there and that 50 is just e it's easier to make right 35 millimeter lens is harder to make and keep the edges clean those really wide angle lenses that are clean around the edges are really expensive because that's physically hard like you said it's physics there's it's optics there's things that you just have to work around technologically right. you don't necessarily have to at the 50 millimeter Right. So, uh, yeah, so in 50, I like 50. I like that focal length. Uh, part of what I like about it is it is very much what you see with the human eye. If you exactly. if you put your camera up to your eye with a 50 millimeter lens and you open both eyes, everything is going to be the same size. Pretty much right? in plane. That, that car in front of you and the car through, it's you know, you're looking at with your left eye and the car that you're looking at with your right eye through the camera lens will be about the same size. Very, very close. I think the exact is something like 48 or 49 millimeters is very, very close to 50. And so that allows you to, to experience the world as it actually is through your camera lens. And I think that's part of it too. Um, I, I think you still get the same benefit that I'm talking about with a fixed 35, mm -hmm. but I really like the 50 for that reason of being that way. And like you talk about 35 for portraiture. I mean, I would say for my taste, I think 35 is too wide for portraiture, but a 50 is not. I agree. A 50 you can <laughs> definitely do. Um, you can definitely do portraits with the 50, and if you do shooting with like a 50 1.4, and you get arms length, two arms lengths from somebody to do a portrait, you know, arms length would be a good portrait length. You're mm -hmm. going to get shallow depth of field. You're going to get that nice bokeh. And and you don't have to spend a ton of money to get it. Yeah, that's going to look great. Absolutely. Now I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate for you. So. Right. right now, we're still dealing with the pandemic at the time of this recording. It's just yes, not going anywhere. OK, so <laughs> let's say people aren't working. People aren't quite able to go out and buy the, the Nifty 50, even the less expensive um, Nifty 50. That's like one hundred fifty bucks or so. All they have is that kit lens that came with their bodies. And usually sure. a kit lens is like, say, a, I want to say it's like a 15 to 35 or at, at the best, maybe like a 20, uh, a 70 to 200 or something like that kit lens. Yeah, um, it's in the kind of wide to normal mm -hmm. range, usually, uh, depending on APS-C or full frame. But yeah, yeah, sure. So let's say they have one of those those telephoto kit lenses. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Just say lock it into a certain focal length and just leave it or what? I think that's a great idea. If, the, if, you're, if all you've got is a zoom, but you want to exercise this this thing that I'm talking about, you want to try this out, then yeah, get a piece of gaffer's tape, get a piece of duct tape, get whatever you got. Duct tape might leave some crap on your lens, but get some tape and literally just lock down the zoom. Well, why not? Put a piece of tape on there, lock it into place. And if you really need it, you can take it off, but you know, try not to. Right. Right. I think that's a perfectly fine idea. I love yeah. that. I love that idea, especially with, you know, everybody has tape. <laughs> everybody has <laughs> tape in the house somewhere. And if you're a Southerner like me, everybody has duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape fixes all the things, right? I love it. I love it. Well, my man, yeah. this is this has been great, great information that anybody can use. And it's not intimidating where uh, you, this is your first couple of months picking up a camera, you know, you could still get out there and just really help step your game up and learn a little bit more by putting a little, putting a little bit of a constraint on yourself, essentially. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We grow when we're constrained, you know, when you don't have all the tools around you, you are forced to figure out a way to use what you've got. And that's where creativity comes in. You're yeah. forcing that creativity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. Before we go, I want to allow you to, to, to tell everybody some of the things that you've been working on and or just just, hey, give a plug to something else that you got out there like that. Yeah. Nice, awesome YouTube channel that I subscribe to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, I'm Photo Joseph everywhere. So you'll find me as Photo Joseph on YouTube, on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else. And, you know, my channel is mostly it's photo and video gear and technique is kind of the tagline of the show. I also do a lot with live streaming because I do live streaming myself. And then so I end up doing a lot of education around live streaming. So that's a big part of it, too. Uh, that's, you know, that's the best place to find out anything. Just head over to YouTube, subscribe there, follow me on Twitter. You'll uh, you'll be in touch, you know, depending on how this pandemic goes with any luck <laughs> hmm. with any luck later this year. I'll take a group to India on a photography workshop. I was supposed to do it last year, but that didn't happen. Uh, I was supposed to be around the um, the Pushkar Camel Fair. 
Oh. And that we had to cancel for obvious reasons. Right. The year prior, I went, I took a group out to India for the Kumela, which is this massive, we're talking it was 25 million people. So I don't remember the numbers. It's insane. Oh, or just gathering of human beings on the planet. Uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And it was just photographically, it's just absolutely incredible. So we did that. And again, trying to do the Pushkar Camel Fair last year, I had to cancel, hoping to do it this year. And if it doesn't happen this year, next year for sure but photojoseph.com you'll see all the information about that as well but no. uh, yeah for people I, who like I, photography workshops that should be fun speaking of your live streaming i will say that one of your more recent videos regarding the a10 mini considering black magic mm -hmm. just announced the latest a10 product that i didn't quite like that too much because it seems like everything that they have it it should have been a bit more of a step up you know um especially like with the six, six K pro it, it, well, I wanted a little bit more mini out extreme? of it. Huh? The ATM mini extreme you're talking about. Yeah. That's a massive upgrade, my friend. Uh, in comparison to the ISO. Absolutely. You think so? Yeah. Cause it's not just more. Por oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a huge upgrade. Cause it's not just more ports. So now you've got, and just to be clear, I'm not represented nor paid by black right. magic this i just really really like their stuff yeah um, <laughs> yeah and he does a great job explaining it clearly because i didn't get that from their demo but i'm getting more okay. from him now <laughs> there you go so we'll give it to you now so the a10 mini extreme and the a10 mini extreme iso so the, the only difference between the iso and the extreme is the iso can record all isolated streams coming in um, as, as separate files but the main difference or the differences are the extreme now has eight inputs instead of four it has two DVEs instead of one, which allows you to do a lot more with overlaid graphics. But one of the most important things is it has SuperSource. SuperSource is the ability to do, well, what we're doing right now, the fact that you have two images of us side by side with yep. something in the background. So the way that this is done is you've taken one of our videos, cropped it, moved it to the side, yep. taken the other one, cropped it, moved it to the side, probably shrunk them down 90% or something. Yep. And that layout in hardware requires something called super source. And without super source, the best you can do is a picture in picture, which to do what you're doing right now, you could not do on the ATEM Mini or the ATEM, well, any other ATEM Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO line until you get to the extreme. Uh. That super source is a really, really big deal. And it's funny because for people who are used to using software to do the layout, it's kind of hard to understand why this is a big deal, but you can do stuff in software that you can't do in hardware cheaply. You know, in software, you can do anything you want, but in yeah. software, you're, you've got reliability issues. You've got uh, the computer that's required to drive it, which can be more expensive sometimes than the hardware. Yeah, it's a big battle. Dedicated it. hardware. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of difference. There's a lot of reasons that you, know, you should go hardware instead of software, but software has its advantages. I'm not going to dispute that. But when it comes to hardware, to get an ATEM switcher that had super source, you were spending four to six thousand dollars before last week. And now you can get it for a thousand dollars. So oh, that is okay. a huge, huge thing. See, see, so this is this is a bargain. See, it really is. Uh, yeah, this 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 basically came out in English. Now I understand. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched no, the, the demo the and I was like, I don't get it. Great. Why? 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 But okay, now I yeah. get it. Thank Plus, you. Plus, you have if you're using Blackmagic cameras, you have camera control from the switcher, so you can control color and exposure and focus from the switcher, which means especially if you're operating that many cameras, if you're sitting back with the switcher in front of you, you got a big monitor up that's your, um, your multi-view, so you see all the cameras at once, yep. and you can see, oh, the subject moved, camera three's out of focus, you can hit the autofocus button. Um, something changed in the lighting, it's a little bit dark over there, let's open the aperture on camera four, and you can do that from the switcher and even from the hardware itself. Not even touching it's, the camera. <laughs> yeah, Not even touching the camera, it's beautiful. You do have to be using the Blackmagic cameras for that. Right. But, um, but it's, yeah. It's a, it's a nice hardware. <laughs> that's what's up. So now I feel better. That's again, hey. that's, that's, that's why I called you the ninja of all photographic stuff because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, what don't you know? Good grief. I love it. But again, thank you so much for joining me this week, my man. I really do appreciate your time. All Absolutely. Right. Anytime. All right. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for us this week here on Hands On Photography. Thank you all for joining me this week. Again, I really hope y'all enjoyed this. I, 
I did. I'm, I'm always looking to learn more information to help me get better at this craft, uh, regardless of how long I've been shooting. And I think we all need to take that approach. So you find folks like Photo Joseph and pick their brain a little bit and get your learning on, you know. <laughs> Again, you can find us each and every week here on the network on Thursdays is when we drop the show. Uh, Just subscribe in whatever podcast application you're enjoying us on. But if you really want to help support the show, hop into Apple Podcasts or iTunes if you're oldish like Photo Joseph and I. Uh, Hop into iTunes and leave me a nice comment and a star rating. That way Apple will push us up to let other people know more about the show and recommend us uh, to different listeners out there. I really do appreciate that support. And if you have any questions or feedback, you can feel free to shoot an email to hop at twit.tv. Again, it's hop at twit.tv. More than happy to, to check out the messages from me and, and image critiques and feedback and so on and so forth. Now, if you want me to show your images on the show, you have to say in there, hey, that, that I have your consent to use your images on the show. That's just how I roll. And if you want to follow me on social media, go ahead and do that too. I'm ant underscore Pruitt over on Twitter, as well as ant underscore Pruitt Pruitt over on uh, Instagram. All right. So that's going to do it this week, folks. Thank you all again. We will catch you next time here on Hands On Photography. Now you all safely create and dominate. See you next time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 